Our next section in chapter two is factoring special products. What they mean by special products were we're going to be able to factor perfect squares. We're going to be able to come up with a perfect square. Remember that if I were to square that, it would be the first term squared. Two times the first times the last plus the last term squared. Same thing. A minus B squared would be first term squared. Two times the first times the last. Then the last term squared. Last sign's always positive. The middle term, you copy the sign. The other special product that um, we dealt with were the conjugate pairs. A plus B times A minus B. And that was the first term squared minus the last term squared. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take the right side. And turn it into the left. Notice these special products, the first and the last terms. Our squares. Okay. I'm going to do multiple, multiple examples here. Um, we're going to start with the easiest one is this. Notice that sign has to be negative for this pattern to work. So first one is 100 minus 49 x squared. And the way we're going to do this is we're going to take the square root of the first plus square root of the last times square root of the first minus square root of the last. So square root of the first is 10 plus 7x times 10 minus 7x. And we're done. Next example, 121 S squared minus 25 E squared. Square root of the first, 11 S plus square root of the last, 5 T. And then copy this, but just change the sign, 11 S minus 5t. Okay. We can expand this to even working with just general numbers. For example, I can do, what is the answer to 44 squared minus 39 squared? Notice both of those are squared. So it's the square root of the first plus square root of the last times square root of the first minus square root of the last. Now I can simplify these things. 44 plus 39, um, that would be one that we'd want to be able to do in our heads is 83. 44 minus 39 is 5. Multiply those two things together and you get 415. Okay, I know you could do the problem here in a calculator really quick. Um, but uh, this is how people are able to do problems like what is 60... Um, we'll, we'll save that one for another day. Um, see those people that do those funny math things? Uh, they, you know, how can they multiply things quickly? They're using things like this. Okay. Um, let's do one more that has a little nuance for this type. And it would be something like 8y squared minus 72. 
Notice eight's not a perfect square, but eight does go into both of these terms. Remember in the last lesson I said, hey, we're gonna try to factor out a greatest common factor. So let's do that. That's gonna give me eight times y squared minus nine. Then that does follow the pattern. So keep the eight, square root of the first, plus square root of the last, square root of the first, minus square root of the last. So I get eight times y plus three times y minus three. Okay. So that's what they call the difference of squares pattern. Um, now we're gonna do the, the polynomial squares. So, first one we're going to do is x squared plus 26x plus 169. Again, perfect square, perfect square. The way we're going to get this is we're going to do square root of the first, square root of the last. We're going to copy the sign. all squared. So for me to do this one, it is the square root of the first, square root of the last, copy the sign, all squared. Okay, this is the reason why I had you guys memorizing some perfect squares. Now one thing you want to do is you want to verify that the middle number is two times the first times the last. Because sometimes I can have a polynomial of the first term squared is the last term squared, but the middle number doesn't work. What you want to do is you want to verify. So we want to verify. 2 times 1 times 13, 26, that works. Next one. 16x squared minus 40x plus 25. Square root of the first. Square root of the last, copy the sign, all squared. And now we're going to verify um, 2 times 4 times negative 5 is negative 40, and it works. Please don't forget that verify step. Um, the Any other weird nuances here? And go look at some of the other examples they have here. Yeah, let's do this one. 4x squared minus 24x plus 36. Here, the first term is a perfect square. Yes, it's 4. Last term is a perfect square. Yes, it's 36. However, every single term in here has a four, so I'm gonna to wanna to pull out that greatest common factor first. Four divided by four is one, so I have x squared. 24 to, negative 24 divided by four is minus six x. 36 divided by four is plus nine. Now I can do my square root of the first, square root of the last, Copy the sign, square. That's the way they'd want to see the answer. Um, if you give me something that looks like this, just going directly from here, I would take square root of the first, square root of the last, copy the sign, all squared. But notice it's not factored completely. Hey, I've got to pull a two out. Where students are gonna get something wrong is they're gonna say, oh, I can pull a two out. Okay, this is wrong because you need to pull a two out of each. Remember, this is two x minus six times two x minus six. So if you pull one two out, I still have another two I can pull out. 
And that gives me the 4 times x minus 3 squared. So again, pull the greatest common factor out. Otherwise, you could end up with wrong answers in there. This section is definitely a lot easier than the previous two sections. Okay, let me go back over the rules that we use. It's a perfect square, perfect square trinomial. It's square to the first, square to the last, copy the sign, all squared. If it's a difference of squares pattern, it's square root of the first plus square root of the last times square root of the first minus square root of the last. 